this lady that wrote many American music, many hymns that we sing today, including Pass Me Not, O Gentle Savior, Blessed Assurance, and uh, To God Be the Glory. All these hymns were written by this lady. But this lady got blind six weeks after birth. She encountered cold in the eyes and they took her to hospital. And, and the, the physician that did the work applied some medication that was too strong for her at the time. And so she became blind for life. But this is the statement that this lady has to say. Because this physician has begun to regret that application, that process. According to sources, according to information, this physician regretted her throughout his life for making this surgery. But this blind lady said if she can find him, she will say thank you for making me blind. Even though it was your blunder, but God intended for different purpose. This morning or afternoon, I would like to speak to you on the theme or topic, see God in all things. See God in all things. In all things, in everything, you need to begin to see God. And what God can do in your life. Because if it wasn't God who was on your side, where would it have been by now? Our story this morning as we read from the book of Genesis. It's about a man that I love so much. I don't know if it's because my name is Joseph. But I love that story that I can talk about that story anytime, anywhere. I can preach about it every hour if you give me a chance. And you may get different things from it every time I preach it. Hallelujah, somebody. We know the story. I don't want to waste your time. This young man at his tender age began to see visions and have dreams. He explained it to the family, the brothers, and everybody, and everybody went against him for what he began to dream about. And because everybody thought that he trying to impersonate and put himself in position where he's not supposed to because out of the 12 sons, he was the 11th. And, 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 and so why is he thinking that he could be the head of the, of the family when the older brothers and all are there? And, and so everything went against him. We know the story. In the process... Joseph was hated to the, to the West, I don't know how to describe it, to the point that they wanted to take his life, to kill him, to destroy him. Because if they kill him, the dreams are over. But God was in this process. And so Joseph, after his brothers have arrested him and put him in the pit, By the intervention of Reuben, it was Reuben that caused him to be put in a pit because he wanted to make sure he passed behind them and get him to escape. So he said, instead of us killing him, sharing his blood, his blood will be on our hands. So let, him, let us put him in a pit so he may die by himself. That was his first intention. But God was the one speaking. They put him there thinking that he's going to die. He, they went on the field, he went on the field, and they were trying to find ways so that at least he will come back and get him out. God said, no, if you get him out, my plan, my purpose will not be fulfilled. Yeah, yeah. So, so you don't have to worry about that. Your mission has been accomplished. I only make you to make sure that he's in the pit. Just leave the rest with me. The Bible says that while he was in the pit, God sent the merchants in that direction. Oh, my God. Then he came into one of them and he said, Brothers, what will we get if we let him die in the pit? Why can't we take him and sell him for some money? Because we can benefit some cash if we can sell him. But if he die in the pit, we benefit nothing. God was doing his own work. And so Joseph was taken out of the pit. He was sold into, onto the merchant. And then Joseph became like a merchandise in the hands of people. The people bought him 
and they went and also sold him over. And, and so I don't know if human beings can become a goose like that where they're selling him, everybody buying and selling. But that is how Joseph's life became. Hallelujah, somebody. And, and, and we know the story. He went to Potiphar's house. In Potiphar's house, God, God said that this is not where I intended for you. Your position is up there. Potiphar is just another level. So I need to get you there. But Joseph was being so comfort in Potiphar's house. Because according to the story, even Potiphar has blessed him over everything that he had. Except his wife. Hello? There's one thing I want you to realize. Most of the time, the devil looks for accept. If God gives you instruction and place any exception to it, that exception is what the devil looks for. When he placed Adam and Eve in a garden, he told them, you can have everything. You can do anything except. Except. So when the devil came to meet them, he didn't care about everything that God told them they could have. He didn't care about everything that they have in the garden. He was focusing on the exception so that he would get them to do the wrong thing. So Joseph was in charge of everything except for the first wife. So the devil said, okay, I'm coming. I will make sure the exception is what you will temper with and so that I can get rid of you and get you disgrace. Potiphar's wife came over, attacked Joseph. We know the story. I don't want to waste your time. Joseph had to go through all those process, and then Joseph had to end up in prison. But if God is with you, everywhere you go, you are on top of things. Whenever you go to prison, I don't know about here, the prison here. I don't know if somebody has been in prison here before. I don't know. But in Africa, whenever you enter into prison, the people that have stayed the longest in the prison, they call them CIC. CIC, that is Commander in Chief. Whenever you enter into that prison, anything they tell you, you have to go by it. If you don't go by it, you're going to get beaten. That is African prisons. If your people happen to bring you food and other stuff, the CRC have to decide what you're supposed to get. That is what happens in the prison. In Africa, I'm talking about Africa. So I believe this should be something that it should be happening over there because Egypt was in Africa. But when Joseph entered into the prison, he would just come in, he became the CRC. He decided things to be done in the prison because the Bible says the person in charge of the prison placed Joseph in charge of everything. See God in all things. Joseph was in prison. God says, just wait for me. I'm working out the modalities to get you to the place where I need to get you. Two of Pharaoh's servants had dreams. They were also cast into prison. While they were in prison, I mean, they had problems and they were cast into prison. While they were in prison, they had dreams. He interpreted the dream. And the, the story said the dream came to pass as he did. The one that he said he would be killed, he was killed. And the one that he said he would be restored to his position, he was restored. But after he has been restored, he forget about Joseph. Sometimes you do good and people don't remember again. But that shouldn't hurt you. Because if you can see God in everything, you will know that sometimes it is good that they forget about you. Because if this guy who was restored have to be able to make connection to get Joseph out, Joseph wouldn't have gone to the position that he's supposed to be. So God intentionally made this guy to forget about Joseph because the time has not yet come. So when you are still in the process, 
you will go through a lot of stuff. Sometimes some of us, we are in the process. And that's why we are going through what we are going through. After some time, God caused Pharaoh himself to have a dream. And nobody could interpret. It was at this time that God reminded this guy. He said, remember when you were in prison, there was a guy that interpreted your dream. Can you check out and see if this guy is still there? They follow up with this guy and notice that Joseph was still in prison. They call Joseph over to come and see if he can interpret the dream. We know the story. Let me leave it there so that I don't waste your time. Joseph interpreted the dream. Everything went on. Joseph became the governor. After everything had been done, he became the governor. Now God's purpose is coming to pass. Hunger came. And then the people of the land needed food. So Israel had to go to Egypt for food. When I'm talking about Israel, I'm talking about the descendants of Jacob. So they went to Egypt so they can survive. So Israelites live because of the Egyptians, right? Right? They would have died. Is that true, right? No, the Egyptians lived because of the Israelites. The reason why the Egyptians had enough food, it was because God intended Israel to survive. So he sent Joseph ahead of time to prepare the place for Israel to have food in the future. So it was not Egypt that helped Israel. It was Israel that helped Egypt. If Joseph was not in Egypt, the Egyptians would have died with hunger. His brothers came and they did not recognize him. Sometimes, if God places you in positions, your enemies will not recognize you. They came the second time and he tricked them. We follow the story to the point where he asked that the whole family should come over to Egypt. And that happened. And after all these things have been done, the Bible says the father died. And then they, all of them became afraid, thinking what Joseph will do in the absence of the father. And then they went and sent appeal to him to forgive them all that they have done. And they themselves went to fulfill the dream. You see, all of them went and fell and bowed down to Joseph. And then the dream that they had before, everybody began to remember. And the Bible said they cried. And after all of them have wept, Joseph woke up and said, listen to me, people of God. For you, you thought you were doing me evil. For you, you thought you were doing me harm. But God intended it for good. So that it can save a lot of people. Hallelujah, somebody. That is why Paul came over in Romans and said, we know that all things work together for good. To them that love God. A, 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 a thing does not work for good to everybody. It is only to them that love God. And to them that are called according to his purpose. People of God, if God's eyes is on you, whatever you are going through, you need to see him in whatever you are going through. Because if you see God in every situation, then you will know that God intending it for your own good. It is not harmful. God does not give anything that you cannot bear. God cannot place anything on you that you cannot go through. He knows your ability. He knows your strength. He knows that you can make it. That is why he has, he's making you to go through what you are going through. I don't know what you are going through today. But I bet you, brothers and sisters, martyrs, some of us, 
If we don't have what we are going through, we wouldn't be here. You are coming to church because of something. Some of us don't pray until we remember what we are going through. So you pray because of what you are going through. Hello, somebody. If God has not put something in you that will disturb you, will make you to come up to make sure that the relationship continue, you wouldn't be here. So whatever you are going through, see it as a point that God wants to use to make you stronger. What God wants to use to continue to make you to build up the relationship. Because if it is not that, that relationship will have broken. See God in all things. Because he is with us. In everything, God is with us. So God used Joseph to accomplish his mission. But Joseph had to go through all the ordeals that he went through. Sufferings, trials, temptations, loss of loved ones, separations, calamities, and all those things you can name about. They all may come our way. Wherever source it comes from, whosoever the cause of whatever happened to you, I want you to know that God can use it as a channel to transform you. Because all things work together for good to them that love God. God wants to use whatever we go through to bring us closer to himself. And that is what David said. Before I was afflicted, I went astray. But now I keep your word. He went down again and he said, It is good for me that I have been afflicted, that I may learn your status. It was good for me to have been afflicted so that I can learn your status. God put some stuff in our lives to continue to strengthen us in many ways. But you need to see God in everything. Things do happen. I read a story about a man, and I just want to share this shortly with you. This man, when he was 17 years old, his family was forced out of their home on a legal technicality. And he had to work to help support them. At the age nine, his mother died. At 22, he lost his job as a store clerk. He wanted to go to a law school, but his education wasn't good enough. At 23, he went into debt to become a partner in a small store. At 26, his business partner died, leaving him a huge debt that took him many years to repay. At 28, this man, after cutting a girl for four years, he asked her to marry him. She said, no, you don't work. At 37, on his third try, he was elected to Congress. But two years later, he failed to be re-elected. At 41, his four-year-old son died. And at 45, he ran for the Senate and lost. At 47, he failed as the vice presidential candidate. At 49, he ran for the Senate again and lost. At 41, 51, he was elected president of the United States. And this man decreed the Declaration of Emancipation in 1863. His name was Abraham Lincoln. A man many consider the greatest leader the country has ever had. 100, exactly 100 years, a man stood on the ground dedicated to Abraham Lincoln in D.C. to deliver the notorious speech, I have a dream. That was fulfilled in 2009. We saw that. But in everything that happened to this Lincoln, it was misfortunes over misfortunes. It was things that came in over and over again. But, but, but one thing I want you to know that whatever happens to you, you need to see God in everything. In our country now, we have our president. So many people don't like him. Some people talk a sort of things about this, our new president. 
whether you like him or not, but there is one thing that you need to know. That God is using him for different things. Sometimes to strengthen us. Sometimes to punish us. Sometimes to make us to think and think over again. So, sometimes there's a lesson that we need to learn. Well, whether you like him or not. But there's something that this man said that makes sense. He said, what separates the winners from the losers is how a person reacts to each new twist of fate. Sometimes by losing a battle, you find a new way to win the war. This is what we are talking about. That you need to see God in everything. You need to see God in everything. Sometimes God delay you for something. The, the, the reason why you couldn't make it to college, there's a reason. But maybe up to now you have never learned it. You have not seen the reason. All of us may not be able to go to college. The, the, the reason why you finish college but you don't have a job, sometimes you, you have not learned the reason. There is a reason behind everything that happens. God wants you to realize something. And that is what you have not yet learned. Hallelujah, somebody. Joseph said, for you, you intended it for evil. But God intended it for good. For all things work together. For good to them that love God. To them who are called according to the purpose. Then James said, count it all joy. When you go through diverse temptation. Because after you have gone through all these things. God's perfect will will have his way in your life when you bear patience. It is my prayer that you learn to see God in everything, whether good or bad. Recognize that life is not a straight line. Life is not a straight line. You, you, you may encounter curves sometimes. You, you may bump into some stuff sometimes. But all those things work together for good. To you, so that you can know the power of God in your life. If you don't have a story, you will never have a history. That is why you need to have something to say. Even in the things of God, God had to pass through some places. So that when you stand to share your testimony to other people, they will know that your God is good. You will be able to become a good evangelist. And be able to speak to people and they give their life to Christ. If you have a story to share. That is why you need to see God in everything. If you lose your job today. Maybe God has a better one for you. I don't know what you are going through. But if your wife says she is going out of the door. Sometimes it is good that she take the door. Hallelujah somebody. If your husband want to go. Sometimes it is good that he takes the door. See God in everything. Because God knows why he does some things. Hallelujah, somebody. Not everything that happened is so bad. Hallelujah, somebody. Listen, listen to me, people of God. The, the old people did not make mistake to say that every misfortune is a blessing. That, that is what the old people said. That every misfortune is a blessing. So don't take everything that happened to be so bad. It could be bad indeed, we agree. But see God behind those things. Because at the end of the day, you the same person will say it was good that it happened that way. You may be in agreement with David and say, I didn't know that this is how it was going to end. But now I know, so I give God the praise. So whatsoever you are going through in life, brothers and sisters, mothers here today, I want you to know that God is in it. He 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 knows what you are going through. He sees what you are going through. But he's in it. And he knows the destination. He knows how it's going to end. He knows the end of the story from the very beginning. And so he's going to work it out for your own good. God, work out all things for your good. To those who love him. Not everybody. Not because every bad thing happened to everybody, so it is good. Only those who love him. Because when you love him, he will not let you die. When you love God, he will make sure that the mission is accomplished. There's one thing I've come to realize in life. No missionary die 
before their mission. No, 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 no. No missionary dies before their mission. Let me say that again. No missionary dies before their mission. If any missionary die before they reach where they're supposed to go because their mission is already over. All of us are not supposed to reach where we're supposed to reach. God uses some people so there will be a testimony. So no missionary dies before their mission. So if you are on mission for God, you will not die. You will accomplish the purpose. If you die any time, just count it all joy. It's because your mission is over. If not, Jesus wouldn't die at the age 33. He would live the longest to continue. But the mission was over. He got to go. So when your mission is over, you got to go. God is still keeping you because you still have some job to be done. If you are still living today, it means that there's still something that you need to do. Maybe your great-grandchildren need your word. Maybe your great-grandchildren need something that you need to share and give them before you go. Because if you go, they will not get that knowledge. If you go, they will not get that information. God has to preserve you for that message to be released into their life, to impart that knowledge into their life. When that mission gets over, you are going. See God in all things, good or bad. He is in it. He is in it for your own good. May the Lord bless you. Amen. Amen.